Hey guys, welcome back. Today we'll start a new chapter, chapter 8. This is on the political parties. Or the history of uh, sec Section 1 will be on the history of political parties. So the growth of American parties. So um, most of you, I would assume, have friends that you hang out with. And why you hang out with them is probably because you share the same values and beliefs. Politics has this same type of make up and they're called political parties. So the job of political parties is to help candidates they support uh, to win elections. Uh, the U.S. has what's called a two-party system which means that there are two major parties that are going to compete and it's been the, that way throughout history although not always the same parties we see today with the Republicans and Democrats. So the first parties. So the Constitution has no mention of political parties. Uh, founding fathers didn't even want them. That's why our first president, Washington, was not affiliated with any party to start with. Although the first parties were formed by Alexander Hamilton, called the Federalists, and Thomas Jefferson, the Democratic Republicans. So there is changes that these parties have overall. So the Democratic Party that we have today will start in 1825 after they split from the Democratic Republicans. And then the modern Republican Party will form in 1854 as they branch off from the Whig Party, which was around from 1834 to 1854. So the Democratic Republicans split in 1828, which will form the Democrats and the National Republicans. So they turn into two parties. Uh, the National Republicans quickly turn into the Whigs in 1834. And then 20 years later, they will form the Republican Party which was basically formed to oppose slavery. So the Democrats and Republicans have been the two dominating parties ever since then, and that's why they are the ones that we only talk about today. So throughout history, there have always been smaller parties that try to compete with the two main ones. These are called third parties. So rarely ever do they win elections, but some of their policies end up getting adopted by the two major parties over time. An example was eight-hour workdays and direct election of senators. Those were third-party ideas that eventually worked their way into the national spotlight with these major parties. So there's different types of third parties. The first one is a single-issue party, which all they want to do is promote a certain cause. One of these was the Prohibition Party, which their entire thing was about trying to push prohibition and, and, and make alcohol illegal. There are certain parties that have different ideologies. One of the major parties in that respect is the Communist Party, which yes, is still around today. They have not won anything though. Uh, some third parties are going to unite around a strong candidate, but they will start to weaken once the candidate is defeated, and uh, they're generally the longest lasting type of third party. So one of these parties uh, was the Reform Party in 1992 and 1996. They were led by Ross Perot, but when he lost both of his election bids in 92 and 96, um, they kind of just fade away into nothing. Other examples of third parties in the U.S., we have the Green Party, the Tea Party, and the Libertarian Parties. So political parties exist in many different countries, uh, but two-party systems are very rare. Most countries have multi-party systems, so meaning they have three or more major parties. And then some countries have one-party systems, and those are your communist and socialist countries. One-party systems are not usually democratic. If they do have elections, usually they're just for show and they don't mean anything, and those results are usually fixed. So differences. So the major differences in the two major parties are going to stem around the size of the federal government. So in the U.S., Democrats believe in a larger federal government. Republicans believe in a smaller federal government. These are considered national parties, which means that they have candidates that run all over the country for different positions, local, state, and federal. Each party does better in some areas, so Democrats tend to do better in cities, while Republicans tend to do better in rural areas. 
if you want to find out what parties stand for, you can find their platforms, which is their party views on different issues. You can look those up, see if they conform to what you believe. So with that, that'll end this video, and we will talk about political parties today in the next one. Thanks, guys.